point where I was I was telling girls go get go get my sandwich. Where well, I lunch, I was like, go get my sandwich, go get me a sandwich. And they would do it. It's Miss Tiffany B. Not the two of the three. I'm the one. And if you don't know, what well, you're about to find out. Tell him about me, Coley. I got you, sis. The baddest to ever do it, the baddest to get it done. Yep. Thinking life's a deuce, Miss B, she's number one, big money. So best believe everything big. Okay. You see her walk in the spot, just know everything lit. Okay. Don't diva shit, make her heads turn like who she leaving with. The baddest, have you seen her? Yeah, she do this, please believe her, you could never. Nah. It would take a lot to get to that level. Tiffany B, big boss, and she never gonna settle. No. Tiffany, that's me. It's Miss B. And you can't forget the B for the baddest. You can't. Money ain't a thing, it's whatever to her. And she love a cheetah prank cause she a savage. Okay. Classy little mama walking tall up in the hills. Yep. A real head turn them and be all up in her grill. Yep. Turn it cause down she got them all up in their fields. Pretty privileges so real because they paying all her bills. Ah. <laughs> the, the girls, girls that, that get, get it, it, get it. it. to another video. Today I want to save you guys a story time because Miss Tiffany B graduated high school 10 years ago. And I feel like on social media we always see stories about people getting bullied, but we never hear story times from bullied. And it just so happened to be that Miss Tiffany B was a mean girl growing up. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you on this internet. And I just feel like Okay, in today's day and age, people act like they have never experienced sin before, okay? People act like they've never been children. People act like they've never felt the emotions of anger, jealousy, rage, whatever the case it may be. But we're human. We're on this earth living a human experience. And to me, what's more important is the fact that you realize your wrongdoings and you grow from it instead of acting like you have never done wrong before. In this video, I do want to touch on my childhood, what it was like growing up. I want to touch on like the middle school era, high school era, and I also want to talk about what happened that got me out of that mean girl phase. So for those of you who don't know what a mean girl is, um, I think this is TikTok terminology, to be honest. But a mean girl is basically, a woman who lives in bitterness um, and that bitterness really stems from insecurity okay so let's just get started with childhood let's get started with you know April 23rd 1996 when Miss Tiffany B popped out so I'm the youngest of three sisters and an older brother I'm the youngest kid and when I was growing up I was always a diva you guys see, I call myself the Don Diva on here. That was a name that was given to me. I didn't just start calling myself the Don Diva out of nowhere. Okay, that's something that came from childhood. Miss Tiffany be the Don Diva. It's a real motherfucking thing. And I believe that when people are born, they're born with um, their life mapped out. Their personality is already set. Everything's already put in place. That's what I truly believe. Of course, your environment, your community could change factors up a bit, but I truly do believe that people are born with their personality, blah, 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 blah. Like, I've been this person since a young age. <gasps> when I was growing up, I did always remember adults telling me, oh my gosh, she's so adorable. My sister's friends, oh my gosh, she's so cute. And I do believe that contributed to me being able to have confidence in today's day and age. Um, that's why I always tell you guys, if you have children, if you want to have children, make sure you encourage your kids at all times because that will carry with them throughout their entire lives. You know, no matter what, it'll always come back to them, that confidence you instilled. But I do remember when I was younger, I always used to just want attention. And even to this day, you guys know, I like the spotlight. It just, it is what it is. I love the camera. I love when all eyes are on me. I just feel like I have a place in that. Um, when I was younger, I would do anything for attention, whether it was me being a feisty little diva, whether it was me um, getting good grades in school so that I could get the praise and stuff for my parents. I just always wanted attention. A very bratty kid, but I was always good in school up until I reached third grade. I was a very good kid in school, but once I got to third grade, I met a group of girls, and I'm going to call us the... Um, Tamagotchi Mean Girls. You want to know why? Because y'all remember the Tamagotchis? 
Y'all remember the Tamagotchis where you could take care of them? It was like a little egg and you had your own character and you would take care of it. It would be a baby and then grow into an adult and then it would die and shit if you didn't take care of it. It was like a pet. And I just feel like when you're in school as a kid, peer pressure is really a thing. Um, trying to fit in is really a thing. But I will also like to say that once I got to grade school, my confidence levels did plummet because you guys can't tell based on this video, but I'm vertically challenged. I'm not the tallest person in the room. It's actually to the point where any time that we would line up the students in the entire grade for graduation rehearsal, they would do it by size order and I was always the first person in line. Um, so I would get teased a lot for being short, but not only was I short, I was short with a big head, big forehead. I would get made fun of for things like that. And then on top of that, my feet were growing faster than the rest of my body. So um, that's the reason why I would squeeze my foot into small shoes and I have bunnies today. So I just wanted to throw that out there so you guys understand that I was living in a place of insecurity by this time. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, back to the Tamagotchi Mean Girls. So we were all in honors. Um, the kids were divided up based on how the teachers believed that they could perform academically, which in my opinion is not okay. Self-fulfilling prophecy 101 to the T. Um, if you guys notice, I think it's just in the American school system overall, the children that are expected to excel are treated better than the children who give teachers more problems, which to me is fucked up because... Sometimes these kids aren't excelling because one, they could have a delay. Two, they probably got shit going on at home. But yeah, the honest kids were always just treated better. I was in honest class, but there was this one girl in particular, right? There was this one girl in particular. This is uh, um, the third to fifth grade era, right? Um, one girl in particular, she would always get good grades. She had the best grades in the class. And the time I got you in girls, we did not like that shit. So we took it upon ourselves to hide her textbook so she couldn't get work done which resulted in our parents having to come to school, a whole bunch of just mingle shit going on. Y'all, Miss B was trying to cop a plea because you already know my heart is pounding. You tell me my mother got to come to school? So I would say that was like the elementary school mean girl era. And of course that transferred with me to middle school and especially high school. So middle school for me was like a very, very awkward era. I was going through an emo phase. <gasps> You start liking boys, you know, puberty's hitting you, you start to get pimples and shit, your body's growing in different ways. Middle school is just very fucking awkward. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that shit, but that's just really how I feel. I do remember always being in drama. Like, we had AIM back in the day. My AIM username was Lil Miss Diva. I just remember being in group chats, talking shit about people, and then of course girls like, oh my god, I heard you were gossiping about me, blah, blah, blah. So it was just like, regular petty ass drama um, my emotions were all over the place i used to get very angry very quickly to the point where they put me in counseling i did not get into any fights when i was in middle school the first fight i ever got into was in high school i'll get to that in a second when i was in eighth grade i got into a relationship this was the first love of my mother fucking life bitch I was obsessed with him, I was in love with him. Even if he was annoying me, I would just head over heels for this boy, right? And we were together for exactly a year. This motherfucker broke up with me on our one year anniversary. And I was so heartbroken. I was so fucking heartbroken. So I'm still emo in this phase, I'm still emo, whatever. He loved me for my emo-ness. But I felt like if I were to glow up on that motherfucker, he was gonna want me back. So he broke up with me, it was in April. Um, I actually do remember the day, April 17th was our anniversary, so whatever, I moped for the last um, era of the school year, and during the summertime, bitch, I took it upon myself to glow the fuck up, glow the fuck up on his ass, thinking that if I grew up, if I was more of a pretty girl, that he would want me back, but what happened in the end was, I became pretty and I ended up not wanting him no more. And in this era, now we're in high school, so... Bitch, I'm a bad ass bitch now at this point in my eyes. So we got things like Tumblr, we got things like, yeah, we had things like Tumblr. Just that bad bitch era was really going on. It was really a big thing. And that's actually something that got me into stripping. Um, <laughs> but I just remember, I, I used to watch this girl on YouTube. Her name is PB Bunny 97 Paulina was her name. And she just inspired me to get super girly. So I started wearing the lipsticks and, you know, the tight dresses that had my hair done, all girly and shit. So when I came back to school, yeah, I was that bitch, yeah. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I was. And I remember the moment where I realized, okay, yeah, I'm pretty. And I know this may sound very pick me ish, but you guys gotta understand, I was younger in this time, and my relationship with men is not the same this day. So I realized I was pretty when one of the senior boys said something to me like, oh, you wanna be my baby? It was, it was just something along those lines. He personally did not impress me because he wasn't someone that I was interested in. Like, you know, you stay over there, whatever. But he was a really popular senior. So I'm like, okay, you know, all eyes on me at this point. Um, and I don't know if you guys remember or if you guys experienced this while you were in high school, but there was always that, like, freshman girl, senior boy relationship, and then the girl would always end up getting her heart broken in the end. Blah, 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 blah. You know that predatory relationship. It starts there. So with that came the fucking gassed head. Big head. Big head gap. Now let me tell you something. I, I, I told you I used to get made fun of for having a big head, but my head was really big in motherfucking high school. In high school, I became the captain of the cheerleading team. I was the lead person in my section for orchestra. I played the viola, so I was the lead viola is the whatever they call it. Um, and not only that, I graduated in the top 10 of my class. Out of 300 some students, I was in the top 10. And so I'm over here, I'm thinking I'm better than everybody, like yeah. Bitch bowed down to me. It was to the point where I was, I was telling girls, go get, go get my sandwich. Well, I'm trying to go get my sandwich, go get me a sandwich. And they would do it. But anyways, I do remember um, always hanging out with the girls that were divas. Always hung out with the people that were in drama. I was always in drama one way or another. I, I will give you guys an example of how um, I was mean in high school. So it was me and a couple friends. My best friend was beefing with another girl. I'm going to call her Christina. Bestie was beefing with Christina. And Christina had a friend named Elise. My bestie was beefing with Christina over a boy, right? So we felt like Elise was kind of... She was like the weakest link in, in that friend group. She was the weakest link. So we took it upon ourselves. Mind you, this is when Facebook is popping. I think we're out of the MySpace days by now, but Facebook is popping. Shit is going viral now. You know what I'm saying? So we took it upon ourselves to take a picture of Elise and, and compare it to a photo of somebody that's not super appealing in the face and the photo went viral and the gag is about that whole entire situation is the fact that Elise was actually a very beautiful and fly ass bitch but we just targeted we targeted her simply off the fact that she was a weaker link. I will say of course the mean girlness definitely caught up with me when I was in uh, my senior year I did end up getting jumped. <laughs> I did end up getting jumped but what the, the thing that was a gag to me was a girl that ended up jumping in and hitting me and shit. Were people I were friends with? I thought we were friends, but I didn't know where. They swinging on me. They swinging on me. So me and Christina ended up fighting. But me and Christina used to be friends in the past. So me and Christina were friends. Um, but me and my bestie, like we were friends for years. So I took her side over Christina's side, ended up beefing with Christina over the boy, blah, blah, blah. So mean girlness, in my opinion, is basically having a bitter soul. Because you can be an 80 year old mean girl. You don't just have to be a mean girl in high school. You can be 80 years old and be a mean girl. But that simply stems from you not being happy with yourself. From a lack of confidence. Lack of um, happiness in life. So once I really started to figure out what it is that I like about myself. Who I am as a person. My purpose here on this earth. That's when I was able to stop being mean. Now let me tell you something. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Even to this day, like I said, I am a diva. I'm not the type of person to back down. I'm not the type of person to keep my mouth shut. I'm very vocal, open with my boundaries. Um, if you disrespect me, I may say something, depending on how I'm feeling, and depending on if I'm going to fight this battle or not, I may say something that's going to hurt their feelings. But I choose, I'm more selective with my energy today. I, I'm more selective with how I decide to get mad. But I do hope that everyone who has been a victim of Miss Tiffany B is okay. All right. Mwah. Kisses to you guys. Prayers to you guys. I do want to close this video out by saying thank you to everyone. I am so happy being back on YouTube. I know a lot of you guys say you miss me. I missed you too. Dead ass though. And I'm, I'm really happy that you stuck around with me. Even through the inconsistency. Even through me being a deadbeat YouTuber. You stuck around with me. And I, I fucking love you guys. I cannot... 
even put into words how much this shit makes me so happy. Miss B Mondays, y'all, that's what it is from this point on. Miss B Mondays. So every Monday, expect a video from yours truly, Miss Cindy B, okay? Whether it be a video or even a live, I'm just gonna make sure I show up for you guys. I love, listen, look, love. That's love, baby. I love you so much. Can you give me a hug right now? Thank you for watching.